Okay, in this video, I just want to talk about a simple little hack which I have used in some of my projects. Now, some of you will recognize this uh, display. It's a very common display. It's a 1602 two line, 16 characters per line LCD display. If you look at the top, you can see the control bus, and there's 16 pins, they're labeled 1 to 16. So you need quite a bit of GPIO from your Uno or your Nano to drive this display. To get around that, you could add on this little piggyback board, which contains a PCF8574 8-bit I.O. expander chip, which will give you 8 I.O. pins. And you can control these pins through the I2C bus, so you only need two lines from your Arduino to control eight GPIO lines on this board, which will drive the display. So you see this connector here, you see the plus five volts in ground, and then your two I2C bus lines, your data and your clock. Now you could buy this piggyback board separately, like this one here. It only costs about two dollars online, and there's, there's, your, uh, there's your bus. So you could plug this into a breadboard and get eight more GPIO pins using the I2C protocol. Okay, I've mounted my piggyback board, my 8-bit I.O. expander board, on my breadboard. And I've powered it up through the Nano, so it runs on 5 volts. So you can see the ground and VCC, and then the two I2C lines, SDA and SCL, so your data and your clock. And here's the two wires. It's going to my Nano. That's my I2C bus. So I'm controlling this board through my I2C bus and I'm controlling the eight I.O. lines, which you can see here. So I've configured this as four inputs and four outputs. So the LEDs are the outputs. So you can see I'm controlling each LED. And I have four input switches for uh, input detection. Now you might be wondering why this LED is over here. It's not with the other ones. Because this, this one could only be configured as an output. Because internally on the board, they're using one of the GPIO lines to drive this transistor here. It's called Q1. And that's what's driving this LED. Now this transistor Q1 was meant to, to drive the backlight on the display. So that transistor could handle 500 milliamps at 40 volts. So you could substitute this LED for, uh, say, a relay coil. And you could actually drive a heavy-duty relay off this, uh, this transistor. So theoretically, we only have seven true GPIO lines, which we could configure either as input or output. And then you have your one that's dedicated for output only. So you can cascade a couple of these boards if you want because it's run on the I2C bus and all you'd have to do is just jumper the address uh, uh, jumpers here you see there's three address lines and you could actually add on uh, more and more of these boards through the, just the two I2C lines coming from the Nano. Okay here's the pinout of the piggyback board the 8-bit IO expansion board and you can see the bus is labeled from 1 to 16. So here's the board here. So on the very right would be pin 1. And on the very left would be pin 16. So if we look at pin 1, that's ground. And pin 2 is plus 5 volts. So we could feed that into other devices on the breadboard. And pin 3 is the output of the pot, the onboard potentiometer. So you have 0 to 5 volts out of pin 3, which you could feed into your ADC channel of your Nano to, to test ADC code. Now your GPIO pins start at pin 4, 5, and 6, which is P0, P1, and P2. Then we go over to pin 11, 12, 13, and 14, which is GPIO pins P4, P5, P6, P7. And on the very left, pin 16, is your P3 pin, which is dedicated for output only. That's connected to the collector of the NPN transistor, which is controlled internally by P3. And you can see there, there's a 5 volts feeding a resistor into the base of the transistor which turns on the transistor all the time until pin th P3 is driven low, which would take away the base current and turn off the transistor. Now to set these GPIOs as inputs, we feed digital ones to the GPIOs that we want to make inputs, and that will create a pull-up resistor on the GPIO lines, and then we just have to pull down uh, each, one of the, uh, each one of the GPIO lines with a, with a switch for input sensing. Okay, I have a program running that's continuously reading the GPIO pins on the piggyback board. And you can see the data there, the high nibble are all ones. That's the input switches. So the pull-ups are pulling them high, so we're reading ones because the switches are off. And the low nibble are all zeros. That's the output GPIO and all the LEDs are on. So if I turn on the switch, which will short the, the input pins to ground, we should get a low. 
So there's the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. So I've driven all the input switches low. I pulled down the pull-up resistor and I'm getting all zeros on my input sensing. Okay, I used to build my own I squared C to GPIO interface board like this one here. And I used the DIP package, the PCF8574 chip. And this is my input switch and this is my output LED. And I use the ULN2803 to drive heavy loads. But by the time I bought the chips and mounted on the board and soldered everything in, it was a lot cheaper and faster just to buy one of these interface boards for two dollars. And bonus, I get a pot here for my zero to five volts for uh, testing uh, ADC code. So overall, this is probably the best way to go.